So I'm sure some of you are noticing something. We're down one. And the reason for that is because work schedules are a bitch. I'm probably going to have to, like, hey, Wolf, I'm sorry, you're probably going to have to censor that. But work schedules are an absolute business. And Even it is. Coffee shop Jesus cannot overcome overtime. Unfortunately, yeah, because, you know, 2020, we're still feeling the effects of it. And also, this pandemic has pretty much caused a lot of businesses to hire people and work them overtime to the point of where they're not able to even have free time to enjoy the things that they love, such as D&D, which Micah has a set day for, but yet he can't enjoy it. And then coming over to record videos with us, usually once a week, but can't do that either. And, yeah, I actually texted Micah to ask him if he would be cool with us continuing Primal without him, and he said it would be fine, because to him... He can watch this in his spare time if he wants to. He did with Castlevania. I mean, when we started Castlevania and we didn't finish it, Micah wanted to Micah, Micah wanted to continue it. And I remember that time. I remember when we stopped watching Castlevania. I wanted to keep watching, but then, yeah, just went the way it went. And I, I'm sad that Micah's not gonna uh, probably not gonna be in these anymore, but. We will have other shows in the future that we will react to with Micah. I, I know there's one in particular that you and I definitely want him to see. Uh, involves a certain man breaking bad. I mean, I wouldn't mind watching that show again, especially with Micah considering his libertarian philosophies and the libertarian philosophies that are in that show. I can't believe he hasn't seen that yet. I can't either. I was just, and he keeps getting recommended it by like his libertarian friends. They're just like, they're just like, dude, Breaking Bad's like one of the most libertarian shows ever. He's like, all right, I'll check it out. Never has. <laughs> and I'm just like, why have you not done this, Micah? And he's just like, mm, just, I guess he never found time, or maybe he just wants to share those experience with someone else. I don't know. Took me a long time to watch it too. Yeah, I remembered it was like end of season four when. I finally got convinced to watch it by somebody, and I did all the way through. I marathoned it. And then I remember my dad and my stepmom got really into it, but they got into it at the mid-season break of season five. Like, right when like right when Hank finds out something, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, there's the big cliffhanger that everyone had to wait over a year for to find out what happened. And uh, I started watching it like right before the final seasons run. So yeah, the, I got to watch it like basically all the way through. And I remembered uh, Dad and Kim watched all of up to season four on there, but yet they couldn't find the first eight episodes of se of season five because those were the first ones out. And I remembered for Christmas I burned them onto a DVD, and I said and I wrote on there to. Uh, to Brian and Kim from WW, like I, I wrote that on like the to and from on yeah. the on the thing, uh, just to signify to them. It's just like they're like W. What is that? And by the time by the time I was uh, uh, by the time they opened the gift, they were just like Nate, did you make this? I'm like, yes, I did. And they're like, what is that? What who's WW? And I'm like, you'll find out. <laughs> and yeah, that. <coughs> That's honest. And then when they were finished, they finally were just like, they called me up. They were just like, oh, Nate. Oh, you. And I'm like, <laughs> I know, right? And now we play the waiting game. Uh, it was like a year later when the, those final episodes came out. That, it was awesome. One of my favorite experiences ever. And then going to watch uh, going to watch uh, El Camino with you and Jacob. That was yeah. really cool. That was, that was awesome. But anyway... <clears throat> Uh, Gennady Tartakovsky's Primal. We will be continuing it without Micah, but hopefully here soon we will be able to get something else with Micah. But we just figured we might as well continue this and finish the first season. And if Micah does finish the first season and season two comes out and he's caught up, we'll watch season two with him. Because hopefully by then, his job will uh, not be as hectic. So anyway, let's get this up on screen. Let's give it a watch. This is Gennady Tartakovsky's Primal, episode three. A cold death. Here we go. 
<laughs> cool thing about this show is we can kind of talk over it without interrupting stuff because yeah, there's no well, dialogue. Well, yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no <laughs> friggin' uh, dialogue. It's just grunts and roars and occasional stabs, stabbing sound effects. The fact that this show does not have dialogue is like honestly one of the most like unique parts about it. I love the idea of that. And I feel like there were shows back in the day that definitely did that, but in certain not ways, in the yeah. same way, really. Like you know, it's usually like classic cartoons, like Tom and Jerry, mammoths, woolly mammoths. Uh, yeah, the alpha at the front. It's bitching. There's probably going to be a straggler, and they're going to pick it off. Yep, that's that's how it goes. Law of the jungle. The strongest survive. Yeah, the old one's had a good run at this point by the looks of things. So. Well, I mean, he's probably like he looks a, like he's not having a fun time anymore. Well, <laughs> so. no, I mean, he's he's at the end of his line, dude. I mean... So he got left behind. Of course he did, man. That's how it goes. There's no... There's... There's no mercy in, like, the... In, like natural selection. Uh, this is a prime attack point right here. A lot of places to get on top of it from the high ground. Side, yeah. yeah. That's how a lot of the, the tribes back in the day did it. They would often trap them and like... like as well as uh, tigers. Yeah. Oh, it's a... It's a oh, there he is. Sup, Spear? Damn. Let's stab. There's Fang. If that lizard's cold blooded, I have trouble believing it would be out active like that right now. Well, keep in mind what uh, keep in mind one thing that we know about dinosaurs now. They are not cold blooded. Or they more often were not cold blooded. Because they're more close they're more related to birds than they are reptiles. See if you're looking at it from the Jurassic Park standpoint. Then maybe, but this is not dressed. Oh my god! Damn. Granted a quick death. Granted a quick death, man. Never forget, like first time I we went hunting with my dad, and there was a first time we got a deer, and we made sure it went out as as like peaceful as possible. There we go. Yeah, my dad. Toast. Yeah, my dad pretty much got a 100% guaranteed kill shot on it. Hit it in the sweet spot, <laughs> and it went down, and uh, it uh, we pretty much. Uh, like, he came up and he finished it with a knife to make sure it was done. Hey, okay. Cultivation and utility. Okay. It's like, oh, come on. I guess I'm doing the... Yeah, he's the pack mule. <laughs> Fang's just like, yeah, fuck you, I ain't dragging that shit. <laughs> I mean, at least he's got clothing now, sort of, to guard him from the crushing weight of the, of the friggin' ice and snow. Keep him in shape. Oh, yeah. Again, should have traveled together. Other than I try and, like, find a cave or something. Speak of the devil. Yeah. There's a cave. I mean, you gotta think, in a white hell like that, that's gotta seem like absolute paradise by comparison. Yeah. Oh, I definitely want shelter in conditions like that. Definitely. They're going to be ads? No. Okay. I'm glad the ads at least get out of the way in the beginning, so that way... Oh. Oh. Oh, they're back at the mammoth. Yeah, they're... Oh. They came back. Uh-oh. That's not good. I'm going to say the bull up front, he's probably just going to, like, want vengeance now. I think they're pissed. 
Elephants don't forget. They have like very long term memories. And they form bonds with their with their pack. And if you gotta think that's like one of their elders, then It's like I shall avenge you, grandpapa. Indeed. And now Shouldn't have left him behind in the first place. That's that's what I'd say to him if I could talk to him. It's just like, why'd you leave him behind then? We left him behind? Yes! Don't swallow it all in one... <laughs> Damn it. Well, you gotta think in terms... Well, survival, dude. I mean... Hunger will make... Hunger will make you do a lot of... Oh, okay. He re he's remembering... Like a time he spent with his son. Or is that his daughter? He's got a little spear for his kid, too. Also, that's another thing about the music in this. I'm glad they like they got someone like Tyler Bates, who's like a really good with percussive like like uh, music production. Uh, he actually was the one who did the music for like 300. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, so same basic attack that he opened on the uh, mammoth with. Yep, same attack pretty much. Plus, they got it right in the sweet spot. Right behind the shoulder, right there. That's a relative to like a deer. The sweet spot is right there that takes out the lungs and the heart in one go. It's pretty much a guaranteed kill shot. Hey, guys! Hop on and run! Use the terrain to your advantage. I'd hop on Fang and just run. Ooh. Oh shit. Mm. Ow! That's a wound. This is definitely a bad situation. Of course it is, man. I mean, you're caught between a rock and a hard place. Except these hard places can move, and there's a lot of them. Yep. Only thing you can do in this regard is run. Oh fuck. Oh no! Oh! That's not good. Oh no. Oh shit. Oh! Oh no, bang. Intimidated to see him holding Grandpapa's tusk, or is it realizing that he only killed Grandpapa for usefulness survival. and survival? Yeah, he ain't killed him for survival. In which that tusk, I think, is a sign of importance. That's also another thing that uh, elephants, you know, elephant graveyards, have heard about. The tusk is like a very important part of that, and their tusks are pretty much like who they are. The ivory. Well, that's another thing, too. Ivory used to be cultivated for weird things, such as piano keys. Did you know that? Yeah. I actually have... A, there's actually a... I've, a family heirloom has a piano that actually has elephant ivory keys. Damn. See, yeah. it's a sign of respect for these mammoths. And they're returning him... They were pretty much laying him to rest where he needs to... where he needs to go. Well, there you go. All is... All is well and everything is as it should be. It's very majestic and uh, heartfelt for a cartoon like that didn't have any dialogue to it, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, the whole... It's like showing, like, beauty of nature even from thousands of years ago, essentially. Like, Well, I mean, that's still there. That's still present. I mean, the one thing that... I mean, 
as far as it's concerned, dude, all of this, all, like, everything that we have, you know, we have our touching moments and everything, like, as a person-to-person basis, but when it happens in nature, you know, as as natural as it is, I mean, I, I witnessed... It's crazy to see yeah. things happen in nature that we, like, for some reason feel like we have a monopoly on as humans, like a... Sedia, sort of, yeah. Like human beings. Well... Yeah. First off, it's like, like seeing like animals like mourning their dead and paying well, respects to their elders and stuff like that. Like, well, absolutely. I mean, the the whole thing is we are not the only like creatures on this planet with sentience. Yeah, that's the one thing. You know, uh, it's the, like we're the only like speech capable species, but there's definitely other for, animals for the that most part feel a lot of the things. There, that there we are feel animals that can, can communicate with each other. Yeah, but but in terms of what makes a human being so like intrinsically special in a lot of ways is number one, we are able to recognize ourselves. You know, most like most creatures when they see themselves in a mirror, they think it's another creature. They're not mm. able to recognize self. There's certain primates that are able to orangutans, which are like probably the smartest primates out there, out you know outside of us, is are they're they're able to recognize themselves. I think certain gorillas chimps. are too, aren't they? So we're gorillas, back. no. Actually, really? in certain extents, no. Because uh, they've done experiments where they've left mirrors out in the woods to see if anyone could recognize themselves, to if, see if uh, you know animals are able to recognize themselves. And pretty much all of them, especially the gorillas, the gorillas like got angry and like rushed up to it like they were trying to intimidate what was in the mirror. Now, certain gorillas may have, but those are f- very rare. Like, I think Coco, the gorilla, the one that actually could learn, like, or learned up to, like, yeah. 300 different signs in sign language. Yes, I think because... Had basically, like, people helping them grow more intelligent and enrich their minds, well, essentially. Well, it's just like, uh, um, you know, us basic human beings. They're, they're human beings who were raised in feral environments. There was one kid, they found him at the age of 12, you know, who had never lived in a house didn't know language he was just a boy who spoke in grunts and screams and he basically was just uh, he hated having to try and become civilized because how he grew up he grew up pretty much just living off the land mm-hmm. you know, eating bugs, eating whatever he could to survive, drinking from creeks and all that and the doctor who was looking after him uh, stated that the boy actually loved like he refused to wear clothes because he'd been naked his whole life and when they put him like they put a fur coat around him even in winter time he would take go outside and he would take off the fur coat and he would just like stand there in, in the and he would like smile because that was a because that was a gift to him that he was able to enjoy the outside again and then eventually it just got to the point where the doctor Lost, con- lost, like control. The state took him back, committed him to a mental asylum, and he died when he was like twenty-seven. Damn. Well, it's it, how we would, how the human species has grown, changed, and evolved over time in terms of society is baffling, because you look at where we were, like over ten, like twelve thousand years ago, we were basically chucking spears at each other and just absolutely like no sense of direction as a species but then you look there's like examples of like Mesopotamia the Indus River Valley civilization China, Egypt like all these old civilizations popping up out of nowhere and then of course you get what we have now the miracles of the internet light, power uh, running water, sewer, like sewer systems, everything. And when you look at the grand scope of that, yeah, I every time I think about it, every time I see it, I can't help but just be thankful that we do not have like. There's problems, yes. There are still problems in the world. There always will be, as far as you know, as far as the world is concerned right now. Yeah. But when you look back at where we were and where we are now. It makes every single little petty thing that people complain about all the time. It makes it seem all insignificant in the long run, and that's and don't get me wrong. I mean, if you're going through something very tough mentally, I feel for you, 
But in terms of like where the human species is and how that could very how very easily, you know, if it were five thousand years ago, you know, if you had these you know, this mental problem, would you survive? More than likely not. No. I mean, it's just well, like... It's just crazy to me that people, like, complain about things such as, like, oh, man, I gotta do laundry. <laughs> and it's like whenever you have, like, a fucking actual washer and dryer <coughs> that does it automatically for And you, you don't got, like, gotta drive to a like, Nick, to a uh, quarter a quarter dispenser uh, laundry uh, yeah, shop like even, even that, though. Like, even that's, that's easier than fucking going to the river and hand-washing all your clothes. Yeah, yeah, and... and like... Oh, and it's like everything's gotten so, easier, and people still complain about doing it. Like, it's just the way, I guess, the way of human nature. I guess I don't know. I mean, society is a we is very strange in terms of how like how we make infinitesimal things seem so big. It's it's amazing to me. I don't get it, but again, I guess it's not for me to get. So again, everyone, I think that's going to do it. This was um, this was a cold death in Kennedy Tartakovsky's Primal. This was episode three. Um, very very heartfelt episode. Very very different episode in terms of what we've had in the last two episodes. This one was a lot more. I'd say the pace is a bit slower, but in terms of like the message it was sending, I think it conveyed it really well. The first two were really setting up the relationship between the spear and fang you know like the yeah. caveman and the lizard yeah or the dinosaur whatever you want to call it the dino, dino. I think um, I think she's like a like a micro t-rex I think I don't, I don't really know. know exactly what she's supposed to be for sure well in terms of like how her arms are and her legs see her arms aren't long enough to be a raptor but yet uh, and her and she doesn't have the sickle claws like raptors usually have either yeah Whereas but she doesn't I, seem big enough to be a T Rex either. I think. Well, again, I think she's like a like a smaller version of a T Rex. Because but also, I mean, if you want to get technical with it, like, but then we'd be like actually, you know, showing the dinosaurs with feathers and stuff. So I don't think it's trying to be that technical either. No, I, it's not. It's, it's trying to tell it's a technically, story. Technically, supposedly T Rexes were not as large as we originally thought. Like, no, a lot of the fossils supposedly increased in size over time. Like I can't. That's remember the I, I've heard that too. I, explanation I don't for know. it. But supposedly, all these things we think were very giant might have actually not been quite that big yeah um like we might not have had like 20 foot t-rexes they might have been more like you know like 12 or something like that yeah more manageable um, but I, I don't really know what they're going for on the species because there are a lot of things that look kind of like t-rexes that are like offshoot species like yeah a, again i think be, this is so. i think everything they're following in this is basically just they're I'm not up What's to date cool? Enough on all the I think ones they're following more along the lines of the rule of cool, and also writing characters that are more, you know, I guess more relatable in some way. But well, I mean, I don't from know. the clip that I've seen from later in the show, they're definitely not going for a hundred percent scientific like accuracy at all. Like, I guess got, they've got some stuff in the show that just is definitely a more of a fantasy thing, like setting wise. Oh. So, okay, like not necessarily something that existed, but looks like it could have, you know. Okay. Well, so. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, uh, as this goes on. But again, everyone, this was Gennady Tartakovsky's Primal. This was uh, Season 1, Episode 3, A Cold Death. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and if you want to see more, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell to stay notified. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.